Pog event. Michael here. Check out my Valentine's Day colors! Happy Valentine's Day everyone and welcome to the third installment of Strange Pokemon Physics. I'm currently in a thermodynamics class this semester, although the test this week was horrible! So I decided to apply some of that knowledge to one of the most well-known and beloved Pokemon of all time. Charizard. Charizard is a fire-flying type Pokemon introduced in the first generation. This badass dragon is famous for its fiery tail and shooting off flamethrowers like no one's business. However, Charizard's flamethrowers are more impressive than the anime makes them seem. Charizard's Pokemon Stadium Pokedex entry states, Its fiery breath reaches incredible temperatures. It can quickly melt glaciers weighing 10,000 tons. 10,000 tons? Quickly? If Charizard can do that, just how hot is Charizard's fire? To figure this out, we first need to figure out how much energy is required to melt a 10,000 ton glacier. For those of you who are unaware, energy is defined as the ability to do work, which is essentially the same as the ability to do something. There's all kinds of energy, such as electrical, chemical, mechanical, and many more. Food contains energy, which is why we have to eat to survive. Calories are actually a unit of energy, so if you eat too many calories, your body won't be able to use all of that energy and the excess will be stored as fat. The SI unit for energy is the joule. But a joule is actually a really small amount of energy, since one calorie is equal to around four joules. So the kilojoule, equal to a thousand joules, is the more common energy unit used. Now back to the glacier. There are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. In order for a substance to have its state of matter changed, whether it's from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, it has to have its temperature raised, and this is achieved by the input of heat energy. Heat is a kind of energy that only occurs when crossing over a system boundary, and it occurs when the two objects interacting are of different temperatures. If the object is a solid, like our glacier, the input of heat energy will raise the object's temperature until it reaches its melting point. The melting point of a substance varies with the pressures exposed to. We'll assume that the glacier is experiencing normal atmospheric pressure, the pressure you're experiencing right now, so its melting point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or 0 degrees Celsius. The formula for heat energy transferred to an object is Q equals MC delta T, or Q equals MCAT. Q is the amount of heat energy, M is the mass of the object, delta T is the change in temperature the object experiences, and C is the specific heat capacity of the substance, or basically the object's resistance to changes in its temperature. For example, an object with a higher specific heat capacity will require more heat energy to have the same temperature change as an object with a lower specific heat capacity. Now back to the glacier. Ice's specific heat capacity is 2.108 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. The glacier's mass, converted to kilograms, is over 9 million kilograms, which is quite a bit. As for delta T, I estimated that the glacier's average temperature would be around negative 13 degrees Celsius, taken from this chart of glacier depth versus temperature for different months of the year. The link to this paper is in the description. The temperature of a glacier varies with its depth, but negative 13 seemed like a good average number. Calculating with Q equals MCAT, getting this glacier's temperature up to zero degrees Celsius would require 250 million kilojoules of heat energy. But wait, there's more. When a substance reaches its melting point, it doesn't all instantly melt at once. It actually requires more heat energy to be inputted, and this energy goes toward breaking the molecular bonds and actually changing the object's phase, as opposed to raising its temperature. The temperature remains constant during this process, and once the substance is completely melted, its temperature will start to rise again as more energy is added. The energy required to change a substance's phase is called latent heat, and the latent heat of fusion, so the solid-liquid boundary, for water is 334 kilojoules per kilogram. So in addition to the energy required to change the glacier's temperature, this glacier will require an additional 3 billion kilojoules to totally melt. So to change this glacier's temperature and completely melt it, it will require 3.3 billion kilojoules. Do you realize how much energy this is? This is equivalent to almost 800 tons of TNT. It's around two times the amount of solar radiation that hits Arizona in a day. It's around 1.4 billion Big Macs. So Charizard has to transfer an absurd amount of energy into that glacier to melt it. And if Pokemon obeys the law of conservation of energy, 
It also means Charizard has to heat a hell of a lot of food to do it. But we don't really care about Charizard's diet. How hot does its fire have to be? Let's assume Charizard's fire transfers heat via convection, which is a gas or liquid, a fluid, flowing over a surface. The formula for this is Q equals HA delta T, where Q is the rate of heat transfer, the heat per time, A is the surface area over which the fluid is flowing, and delta T is the difference in temperature between the surface and the fluid. H is the convective heat transfer coefficient, which is a constant dependent on a lot of factors, such as the fluid's viscosity, type, and velocity. I'm going to use a value of 0.05 kilowatts per meter squared Kelvin, which I took from this paper that I linked to down in the description. For the surface area, I'm using a value of around 2.3 square meters, or around 24.5 square feet, which is the area of a circle whose diameter is Charizard's height. We need to solve for one value of T, the other being the glacier temperature of negative 13 degrees Celsius. But we need to know the heat energy per time. We have the total heat energy, but we don't have the time since the decks only said quickly. So I'm gonna guess Charizard could do it in an hour. Solving for temperature, this means Charizard's fire would be almost 8 million degrees Celsius, or over 14 million degrees Fahrenheit. That's almost 1400 times hotter than the sun, and the actual flames would be 1.6 billion times brighter than direct sunlight. So unless Charizard could control the intensity of its flamethrower, Ash and everyone around him would be very, very dead. So, what have we learned today, class? Well, we've learned that Charizard is far more powerful than a walking star, and it's probably a good thing that Pokemon are not real. What did you think of this video? Did you learn something? What are some other Pokemon you want to see on SPP? Let me know in the comments below! Alright, that's all I have for now. So until next time, Pokefans. Gotta catch them all.